In this video, we'll go from just having a raw data set like this to converting it into an interactive PL dashboard where you can see a company's finances by region, by month, and even convert it into a budget versus actuals dashboard in just a few clicks. Going from raw data to a polished report is one of the most important Excel skills you can learn, and we'll cover four main steps for this. First is creating the PL pivot table, second is making it dynamic. Thirdly is designing the dashboard and finally we'll create the budget versus actuals. So let's get into it. Here we have the file we're working with which has the date, it has the region, the accounts, the description and the actual figures and their budgeted figures. As you can tell by the descriptions this is for a car manufacturer and first we're gonna convert this into a table by pressing ctrl T and OK. And if you want to download the same data set to follow along, which I would recommend, head over to a link in the description below to download this file for free. Now that we have this as a table, we're going to go over to insert and convert it into a pivot table so we can analyze it better. We're happy with it going to a new worksheet and click on OK. First, we're going to create the PL by month and for this we're going to need the accounts, which are all of the line items like the revenue, the profit and so forth. And we're also going to need the months as the columns. We can select the date for that and drag and drop it. You'll notice that it automatically generates two more columns, so we can just get rid of them by dragging and dropping out of it. So we now have just the date, the accounts, but we're missing the figures themselves, which are the actual numbers. We can drag and drop that into the values. This is blocking a bit of the view, so we can drag it all the way to the side like so. Now you'll notice that the line items aren't in order for a profit and loss statement, we should have the revenue up top. So to move that, we can select it all with Control shift right And as we hover over the row, you'll notice that we get these four arrows. Once we do, we can just click and drag all the way to the top, and that's how we rearrange it. Let me fast forward the rest. Nice, that's looking in order, and we can get rid of these totals. For that, go over to Design. And then we're just going to go over to grand totals of four rows and columns. Next up, we can add the description inside of the accounts. And so now it's starting to look a lot more like a profit and loss statement with the different types of revenues, the different types of cost of goods sold to reach the gross profit and so forth. Some of these we can collapse like net income is then telling us net income as well. So we can just press on the minus there. Same thing over here with operating income and gross profit so it's not duplicated. Now we want to arrange these numbers. We can do that by clicking on this drop down under value field settings. We're going to go for number format and more specifically we want this to be a number with a thousand separator and no decimal places. Click on OK. OK again and now you can see it's looking a lot more polished. I can even drag this over a bit more. We also don't need any of these field headers up top, so we can go to Pivot Table Analyze and deselect on the field headers. That's a really good start, and the next step is to make it dynamic. For this, we'll go over to column A here and add another column with Control Shift Plus, Control Shift Plus again. This one, let's go ahead and extend it out further, kind of like that. And what we'll do is add a few slicers to make this dynamic by clicking inside of the Pivot Table under pivot table analyze we're gonna insert a slicer more specifically we want one for the dates and we want one for the regions click on ok so we get these two slicers generated and now we just want to drag them over to the side and resize them let me fast forward that to test if this is working correctly we can always click on a certain region like the americas and you can see how the pnl is changing same thing with the dates if we select one of the dates you'll see there we only have january and to select multiple we can press the control key and now we can select three for example to remove the filter we can just press on this x and this x as well before we move on to the design phase if you want to learn more about finance you can consider taking our complete finance and valuation course where you'll learn all the essentials of accounting, finance, valuation, and financial modeling on Excel. In the course, first we'll cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we'll get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple. After that, we'll begin the valuation phase where you'll learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe. 
looking at their real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. We can now move on to the design phase, after which we'll work on the actuals versus budget. So over here, first thing we'll do is get rid of the grid lines by going over to view and clicking on grid lines. Then we're going to want to add a header up top. So we can add a few more rows in here with shift space and control shift plus. Let's do that a few times like so. Now for the first four rows, we'll select them with shift plus and then shift down arrow. We're going to change the background color to let's say something like a dark blue. Just going to choose this one down over here. We also might want to add a title over here in the center, which we can do by going to insert and clicking on a text box. I'm just going to stretch that out roughly around here. And let's call this something like interactive profit and loss statement. And we can change the sizing and center it as well, like so. And finally, we need to get rid of the background color. We can do that by clicking on it and going to shape format. We're going to change the shape fill to have no fill and the shape outline as well to no outline. But for the text itself, we can change that to a white color for it to stand out a bit more. It would also be nice to add a logo over here to the side. Maybe it can be this company's logo. In my case, I'm just going to add my company's. Awesome. This is starting to take shape. And now we can change the colors of the slicers as well and the PNL. So first, we're just going to add a bit of a background color to the slicers so they stand out. By going to insert and under shapes, we're going to go for this rectangular shape over here with the rounded corners and just drag and drop that all the way around here. We're going to change the corners to be a bit less round, kind of like so. And we can change the fill color to a light gray so it doesn't stand out that much. No outline and we can also add a shadow like let's say this one down over here. And finally, we can't see anything right now. So we need to send this to the back with right click, send to back. Now you can see the slicers are inside of them. Let me make sure they're well aligned. Awesome. Now let's work on the slicers themselves with control click, to select both of them. Now we can go over to the slicer tab. And in here, what we want to do is right click on the slicer and go to duplicate. This way, we're going to be able to make some changes on it with this pop-up. We want to change the selected item with data, which is currently in light blue, and go to format. And under the fill here, we want to change the color itself, the background one. So we'll go to more colors. And let me just type the blue that I've been using, which is 073673. Click on OK there. And now you can see what that looks like down below. We also need to change the font color as having a black on a blue is not going to be very visible. So under font in the color here, we're going to choose a white one. Click on OK. OK again. And you'll notice nothing actually changes. That's because we need to select the right one, which is this one over here to the left. We can also right click again and modify as we please. Like for example, in the fourth full slicer, I could get rid of the borders around it. So under border, I can click on none. So you can see under preview, I have no borders. Click on OK. OK again. And now you can see what that looks like. The title's looking good. The slicers are looking good. And now we should work on the PNL itself, which is right in here in the center. We can do that by going to the design tab. And first under pivot table styles, we can choose a style that we like. Let's suppose that we like this one right here. So I'm just going to click on that. From here, we would like to customize it further and we can do that by right click and clicking on duplicate a bit like the slicer here. Here, we're going to go to the header row format, which is this one right here and click on format. We want to change the fill color for it from the current to more colors. And again, I'm going to choose that same blue 073673. Click on OK and OK again again and now you should be able to find it on this top part we can click on that and it looks to be matching more of the dashboard if you want to get rid of this sum of actual what you can do is just put a space and hit enter now you can see that's looking cleaner so the design phase is now complete and we can work on the actuals versus budget so right now we've only been working with the actual figures 
But what if we want to see the January actual versus the January budgeted amount? For that, we can go back to our pivot table by clicking on pivot table analyze and under the field list, You'll notice we currently only have the actual figures, but we can add the budgeted figures as well inside and get rid of the dates too. Now you can see what that looks like. We have the sum of the actual, the sum of the budget, but it would be good to see two more columns here, maybe one for the difference and the other one, the difference in percentage. We can do that by adding new columns under field, item and sets, and we'll click on calculated field. Under this pop-up, we want to add the difference, firstly in dollar numbers, so we're just going to put a dollar sign, and that's going to be equals to the actual minus the budget. I'm double clicking on each, so they show up up here. We're going to click on add, and secondly, it's just the difference in percentage. So that's actuals divided by the budget, instead of a minus, it's a divide by minus one, that's going to give us the percent. Click on add again and OK. Now you notice that they're going to show up down over here at the bottom. And if we move the pivot table fields, you can see what they look like. We just need to format this a bit better. So these three over here, I'm going to select and just press Control 1 to change the formatting. I want a number with a separator and zero decimal places. Click on OK there. For this final one though, I want it as a percentage. I'm just going to select that with Control shift down Control one again for the formatting and I'm going to want a percentage. I want it with two decimal places though and click on OK. Now you can see all of these looking great, but we want to get rid of this sum of which doesn't make much sense. So what we'll do is just press the F2 key to start to edit that and we need to add a space in front of the difference and then just hit enter. Now we have the difference and let me fast forward the rest. Awesome, now we can resize all of these columns too. So just make these a bit smaller and same thing with this one over here. And we have an actuals versus budget that's fully dynamic. I can look at things just for the month of January, just like I can look at them on a total basis or even for specific regions. One last important thing to show you is if we were to add new data. For example, under the data over here, if we went down towards the very bottom, I can just copy this entire row and paste it down below. The only difference is I'm going to make this July 2024 as opposed to June, just so we can see what happens with new data. Now we can go back to the dashboard sheet and under pivot table analyze, we need to click on refresh. Once we do that, you'll notice that we now get a July information under the slicer. We can click on that. There is obviously not much data in there right now. We only have the net income, but you can see that it updates dynamically too. If you want to learn more about pivot tables, check out this video over here going over some advanced pivot table tricks or check out our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.